Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm about to edit the final video for the Helmish snare drum. It is done. Uh, so we're going to walk you through the rest of the hoops, a few other steps here and there to finish things out, and then a test drive. Now I have to warn you, the test drive is a little bit messy. I tried using uh, a backing track and I'm not sure I got it lined up just right. This is the first time I've ever tried doing that and uh, well you'll see at the very least you get a good sense you get a good sense of the way the snare drum sounds at low and medium high tensions uh, which are the two areas where I think it sounds the best especially the low but I want to hear what you think all right thanks enjoy the video if you would like and subscribe well subscribe if you're not subscribed already please it helps me out a lot and uh, yeah see you on the next drum
the bottom hoop and for each tension rod hole on the bottom hoop, if the camera will focus, I need to make a divot to accept the nut. This will keep the nut from rotating freely uh, so, you can only, so you can tension from one side because it's a single tension drum. And this whole thing's really slapped together because I don't make hoops very often. So obviously a very simple sled. The hole for the tension rod slips over the end of the uh, bit that cut the hole. Rests against the stop. Gets clamped in place. Drops into the guides, goes forward, meets the positive stops halfway through the uh, circumference of or the, the diameter of the drill bit. Pull it out, and that's it. Rinse and repeat ten times. That's not something that's unfixable. I just would prefer not to have to fix it. I'll try tape around the rest and see if that helps at all. Got the first spot clamped down. That will be just fine. It's going to disappear. Okay, to the second pass, put tape down first and went very, very slowly. Um, there's a little bit of tearing, but that's going to sand out. Um, so I'm not worried about that. So tape is the way to go. Should be able to do the rest just fine. Okay, the blade is an eighth of an inch up. I'm gonna go from edge of the walnut inlay or highlight to edge of the walnut highlight. So fairly wide, and then I will um, smooth out the contour with the file.
Hey everybody, it is hot and humid today. It's been raining for the last few days straight practically, and so I haven't been able to get out and uh, take photographs and do a final video of the drum, but the drum is finished. So if you haven't watched the whole series, the, drum, the shell is hard maple, walnut, and sweet gum with a walnut inlaid air vent. The shell itself is just an eighth of an inch thick and you can see that a little bit there. The hoops are all hickory, so it's uh, as hard or harder than most of your drumsticks. You can see a little bit here, there is a an inlaid maple re-ring and then a larger walnut re-ring. These are calfskin heads. The heads are 14 and a half inches in diameter, so they're a little bit oversized because the shell is exactly 14 and a quarter across. I've got piccolo snare strainer and butt end. Both sides are tensionable. Here's the other side. With pure, uh, with pure sound snare strands on the bottom. A couple of things I'm not thrilled about. Uh, the only problem with this, uh, with the single tension system that I have here, is that the tension rods protrude significantly below the shell. Um, I'm thinking I will trim those down a little bit because they don't need to be quite that long. And uh, maybe put a cap on the bottom, just so they don't scratch up surfaces. The other problem is that this doesn't fit on a standard snare stand. If I had put the lip, this ledge that's on the top, the top hoop, also on the bottom hoop, then there would be a, then this actually does fit onto the snare stand and then rides along the edge of the hoop itself. But that didn't work. I, I didn't do it. I didn't think ahead that far, and so that didn't happen. Also, when the drum is under pressure or under tension, the bottom hoop protrudes past the level of the hoop. The bottom head protrudes past the level of the hoop. It doesn't affect sound or playability, uh, but it's something to be aware of. Also, you can see that I need to carve out a little bit more from the bottom hoop to allow easier, easier travel of the snare strap. Other than that, I'm really happy with how this turned out. The drum sounds great, it looks great, it feels good when you play. It's a good drum. Okay, I'm gonna go down to the basement and record the test drive for you. Hope you like it, hope you like the drum. I'd love to hear what you think about it. And uh, keep your eyes peeled. I believe I'm going to put this one up for auction soon. I'll provide information on Instagram, Facebook, and on the YouTube community posts, updates, whatever those are, when I get closer to that. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think, and enjoy. See ya.